poetry is not easy to define, but since our focus today is on poetry as therapy, maybe William Wordsworth's definition fits best. He said that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Hi, welcome back to The Art of Living. I'm Bob Reed. That definition is simple enough, and it fits with the way other artists explain the creative process and its power to promote health and healing. To explore the therapeutic powers of poetry further, we talked with the distinguished professor and former poet laureate of the state of Texas, Jack Myers. Someone once defined poetry as one man's insides talking to another man's insides. And it happens quickly, it happens in a page or two. I never dared to call myself a poet, but when I was about 18, around 18 to 20, I began to really write seriously and used poems to try and figure out difficult issues in my life. Am I who I'm supposed to be? Am I at where I'm supposed to be at in life? What, um, do I have the right attitude toward living? Do I think I still use poetry to center myself, to look inward, to talk about things on the page that I normally couldn't talk with? Uh, talk about with anybody else. This is a poem called the Buddha, the Buddha on Synchronicity. And it's about trying to find uh, positive things in what look like negative experiences. In another life, the Buddha set out to dig a well, naming each basket of dirt for one of his failings. He spread anger on top of impatience and impatience on top of lust and through the lime of mistrust in for good measure. When he was chest deep and exhausted from exhuming himself through his faults, he stood knee deep in muck, where others had said, I've tried to build a well and found only mud. The Buddha cried, good, I have found water. And having dug down long enough and deep, with the leftover dirt, he made a foundation. With the leftover mud, he made bricks. Thus, by digging down to clear water, he was ready to build his house. So that's a kind of um, paradoxical equaling out through going through bad experiences to find within the bad experience something golden that works. I've had a lot of uh, health issues in the last five years. I had a triple bypass. And then I had uh, bladder cancer, then that was followed by la this last uh, summer by prostate cancer. And I've only written directly about those experiences a few times. But what these experiences did bring was the hard reality of mortality home to me. That um, I could, if it weren't in this age of advanced medicine, be dead right now. The border between being a poet and teaching poetry at the university is that I was a, uh, an instinctive natural poet uh, who wrote kind of song-like things, maybe a little bit surreal uh, when I came to the university. And then I had to teach other people how to do this thing I do. All that matters is that she thought I thought it was a nice hat. I thought I thought it was a nice hat. And neither of us thought that, both of us thought that really, but a few days later, we went out on a dinner date, I bought her some nice flowers. <laughs> it starts out sounding perfectly innocent, but he knows because he's hyper aware of the situation. And it's, with this kind of a poem, it's difficult to take out any of the conversational webbing in it without making it sound stilted because it wants to roll as if you're just talking to somebody. Basically what we're doing is going through the poems they write and talking specifically about how to make poems better and, and in a larger sense, what direction their, their work is moving. I had to learn how to talk about the thing I do in terms of critical vocabulary. I had to build up a huge critical vocabulary. Then I had to learn how to break down what I do when I look at a poem into technical moves. And so there was this large education of myself. I began to read Middle Eastern and Eastern literatures and found at least the uh, ethos of those religions 
a, a wonderful, peaceful spirit. And so I tried to meld that spirit into the kinds of issues I was dealing with in the poems. It's, I guess, a form of prayer, a form of creation. Of, I don't know, it just, it gives me a groundedness. I find that if I'm able to get inside myself and touch base with myself through writing, that I have a well, a sense of well-being, a sense of groundedness, and I can go out and kind of face almost any difficulty. It's just, it's a kind of a power tool for the spirit. A painter expresses himself in brush strokes on a canvas. A poet paints his feelings with words on a page. Professor Myers agrees that writing poetry can be therapeutic and contribute to your sense of well-being. Although the art form changes, the therapeutic benefits remain the same. Stay tuned. The Art of Living will return in a moment.